This is the plaintiff, Donna Andrews. She says the defendant stored her old beat-up RV on her property and she owes her money. The woman claims she paid one of her employees in cash. The defendant's lying about it, and she wants the $1,022.28 she's owed. These are the defendants, Lynn and Fred Obermiller. They say this whole thing is one big misunderstanding on the plaintiff's part, because she's confused. That's right. They paid the storage bill in full. They have a check to prove it. And now they have a $98,000 motorhome they can't use. They're accused of copping out on a camper. All parties, please raise your right hand. You see it? Come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. Okay, American Coachworks. Yes. You are suing Fred and Lynn Obermiller for $1,022.28 in storage fees plus interest that you say they owe you for some time now. Tell me what's going on. Um, the Obermillers own an RV. It's a 2000 Fleetwood Bounder. After we performed work on it, it was left at our facility. For how long? Five years. Why would you let something be left on your facility for five years? Well, it, we went back and forth with repairs. They had a lot of problems getting it covered with insurance. There was a lot of problems with this vehicle. Yeah, but five years is not like five months. Five months would be astonishing. Five I years agree. is just clearly I people agree. aren't doing what they're supposed to do. Either you're not fixing it or they're not picking it up because they're getting free storage from you because it's not easy to store an RV. It was fixed and they were getting free How storage. How long was it fixed and they hadn't picked it up? Four years. Why would you tolerate that? Why wouldn't you put a lien on it and sell it? Because it wasn't worth selling. Well, then why so, wouldn't you get it towed or, and, and trash and well, get abandoned? Well, after a while, that's what I did. I finally went after them hard enough with the certified letters to say I want it off of my property, which happened. Four years? In, wow, they must have been laughing. Four whole years. Okay, so then what happened? They went to take it out in November of 2013. They got Without about, paying the storage fees? Without paying the storage fees. At that point, were you charging them storage fees or no? No, not at not At that point, you just wanted point. it off your I lot? I wanted it off my property. So they come to pick it up? and they drive away. Right. A mile down the road, they break down. So they, you let them bring it back? No, I did not. What happened is they broke down. Um, Mr. Elvin Miller received two tickets. It was not insured nor registered. Okay. So because of that, um, the police department called a tow company because he was not allowed to drive it. When I went to my company the next morning, there was the RV. Gotta be kidding me. No. Like a bad penny. And then what happened? <laughs> Um, they asked if they could store it for three months at $120 a month. So in February, they were supposed to pick it up. I started contacting, contacting them in March. In April, I started sending certified letters. Who's that right there? That is Erin Smith. She works with me. She's my witness. Okay. Is she related to you? She's my daughter-in-law. <laughs> daughter-in-law. Stand up a second. I have a question for you. First of all, how old are you? 21. Oh my gosh, you look so young. You're her daughter-in-law? <laughs> yes. Are you married? No. Well, she yeah. did. Almost. Okay. Yeah. That's not, almost doesn't count, okay? <laughs> she works for me. She's my yeah. administrative okay. assistant. Okay, is she the most relaxed potential mother-in-law that has ever lived? Because if she could tolerate five years and not get all over the situation, <laughs> how is she, she like really relaxed with you? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Go ahead, sit down. <laughs> what is going on with you folks? Why do you have a car, a, a, an RV that's fixed other than the obvious that it's right, free storage for you? It was not fixed, okay? For that's five years? Part of Why did you problem? leave it there for five years? Why didn't you take it somewhere else to go because fix it? Because we were dealing with insurance issues. We for found five years? For five years. Guys, we were no, no. No one's dealing with insurance issues for five years. You're dealing with insurance issues. They don't go your way. Then you get a lawyer if you're right. We did or try that. Or you pay that. for it yourself. We did try a lawyer. That still doesn't take five years. It's still not fixed. The original problem. No, no. You didn't know that until five years later when you picked it up the first time. Well, no, that was a whole nother problem. Why did you pick it up? We were told it was drivable, but the problem was the camper went, the motorhome went on fire when it was plugged in. Dude, so the landline. The landline was the problem. It never was fixed. The, the camper never has been plugged into landline. We don't know if it's going to go on fire again. Right. So we said we needed to Yeah, but why inside. did you take it away? And then how did it break down? <laughs> All right. They wanted it out of there, understandably so. We went I'd have we been charging Tom. you storage fees a long time ago. That's we, what gets a person out of there. We saw Tom. We're still working on it. And Tom Thanks. said it's drivable. It broke down a mile and a half on Brooklyn Stanhope Road. So we called Tom, who is Miss Andrews' partner, and most of the correspondence we did, especially with this most recent complaint, was with Tom, not Miss Andrews, okay? I want that made clear. 
And we called Tom in, in the presence of an officer and the tow truck man. Mm -hmm. I said, we, we don't know what to do with this. Can we bring it back? Can you? And I, I said, well, we will pay. We will pay. And what did Tom storage say? Fees. Tom said, why, fine, $60. Why isn't Tom here? Hey, somebody has to run the company. We're very small. Okay, but if Tom's the one doing all the dealings with them, why don't you stay behind? Or you think because Tom's I do the over? dealings. They're saying one thing, but that's not necessarily the truth. Right, that's but if wise. they're saying that Tom, Tom is the one giving them permission, and Absolutely. Tom this, and we only Tom talk to Tom. Tom wasn't there to give permission. He had left. He didn't know that, that it was coming okay, back so to was us. Was Tom Why? surprised when he got there, too? Yes, he has his sworn no. statement. Right, in any event, it. the thing is there, and then what happens? You tell them, get it out of here? Correct. We were going to allow them to store it from November to February, and... Get it out of there. So who agrees on a storage um, The Obermellers and I agree. What? They were Absolutely to her not. About we this. did it with Tom in the presence of an officer and the tow truck. No, 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 no. We're not talking now about you bringing it back. We're talking now about how much you're going to. That's what we exactly. discussed the storage fees. Right. Is there a written storage contract? We're no, all, there is not. We we're all standing there. And, uh, yeah, except for that doesn't help me now, right? Because there's a dispute about what was agreed upon. She wasn't there. Okay. Donna wasn't there at all. We were. And no one was there. When we got back, there was no one there. It was all done through a phone call. How much were you supposed to pay in storage? $60 a month. How much do you say they were? $120 was? a month. Okay. How are, how is, how are either of you going to prove your positions? From credibility, Judge. I chose $120 because of what everybody else charged around the area. I was going $4 lies. a day. Is Can what you stop talking? Thank you. Go ahead. $4 a day is what everybody gets for storage around in our okay, area. Okay, but I'm not asking you to prove it's reasonable. I'm asking you to prove they agreed to it, which is very simple. Uh, unfortunately, you fax, I can't. You email, you get something in writing so that they're agreeing to what the amount is. You send a certified letter, you do something. I because said, now we have a dispute about the amount of, of, uh, to be correct. paid. Because we know zero was paid for five years. Right. Unfortunately, I, I didn't. Okay. I, I sent sort of. Do you have an affidavit from Tom about any discussions he may have had with them? I have a sworn statement from Tom. Yeah, let me see that. Thank you. Thank you. So now the thing comes back to you on what date? <coughs> I don't have the date in November. I apologize. All right. So the thing comes back sometime in November. What year? Can we narrow it down to a year? 2013. 2013. And then it stays there until when? Until June of 2014. All right. And during that time, according to them, they're supposed to pay $60 a month. Did you pay $60 a month? So how much did you pay? Fred went for four months and paid $60 cash. Okay. okay. But it's not four months, but we it's don't, seven months. We, he paid four months cash. We do not have a receipt for that. We do not have a receipt. Then the last two and a half months oh, when gosh. we said we were taking it, we took it after they were gone. We made sure we text Tom to say we were going to pick it up. took it after they were gone? Well, after hours, because they closed at 5 o'clock. Well, I was at work, so we, I needed to go with him. Well, that and you needed to take it before anybody made you pay anything no, else, because that's no, the other version not. of what no, you just absolutely said. Absolutely not, no, because no. I, we paid he, every they, month. They were, made, they were made aware of the fact that I was I'm coming sorry. after hours. Can you prove and that I, you paid seven months worth of the $60? I have the last two and a half months. I had written a check with a note saying this is the final amount that we owe you for the agreed upon storage fees, and then Donna sent the check back. So you've paid zero. Well, she didn't take the no, money. So, but the bottom line is that in the, at the end of the day, you've had your RV stored for six years almost. And With it paid not zero. working at all, because it doesn't work. Okay. It's sitting in our driveway. You know, they can, you know, if they, I understand what you're saying. It may be time to give up on the RV. Oh, I'm yes. ready. I don't even know how to. I don't know how to get rid of it. With like sitting there, I don't know what to do with okay, it. Okay. Well, according to you, it's worth ninety-eight thousand dollars. Not anymore. It's not. No, clearly not. <laughs> well, book you. Book one, That's yeah. what it was. And, and I mean, well, if it runs, maybe. We are at, it's sitting in our driveway, and we don't know what to do with it. And there is no problem with us storing, by the way, because we have a very big driveway. We just wanted the thing right. fixed. We wanted the inside. Okay. Fixed. Can you stop talking a second so I can sure. read what she handed me? According to him, there was no more communication between you after he left you at the school. The following day when he arrived at work, he found it parked where it was pre had previously been. That Donna called you and asked you why was it in our lot again, and that you said, I have nowhere else to take it, and could you store it there for three months. And that Donna's the one who struck the agreement between you and them, and that it was for $120 a month. So when the first month comes and they don't pay it, what do you do? I have certified letters. Okay, and this, let me see your certified letter. Talk to me about how you paid cash for storage fees and didn't get a receipt. That's the whole idea. First of all, I need to go back What's and the whole explain. Idea? Tom, I no, need to No, you don't. Explain. You need to answer my question. Cash. Oh. Yeah, I know, cash. So what? The you records. pay cash, but why wouldn't you get a receipt for the cash to prove you paid cash? No records. No, 
He, he gives you a receipt. He doesn't keep record of it. If that's what you're trying to imply, if he wants it under the table, whatever, that doesn't mean you don't get a receipt. You still get a receipt so that you can prove that you paid him. Otherwise, everybody in your position could claim they paid the whole thing cash. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Stupid, I guess. Your Honor, man. Very good. It's almost like you've watched me all your life. <laughs> <laughs> Previously, we had done work. I have that invoice. Lies. They did pay cash, and we kept the log. They would never give me money unless we initialed everything. We had a contract so. with that. that well, you have a contract. contract with this. We had a contract Wait, with that. Wait, stop. No. You have a contract with this. It's we, the same thing. So it's a verbal contract with this. It. Okay. And it was with right. Tom for $60. I don't care what you say. I care right. what you prove. The and fact that you say it louder and say it while I'm talking okay. doesn't help you. All right, but after stop we got the talking. letter. You're not listening. Stop talking. You're not listening. No, I'm not. Welcome back to the People's Court. RV Levin here. So, do the defendants have to pay something? The 120 bucks in. Um, yeah, I, I think I think they should definitely pay something if they agreed on a loose amount uh, at the See, beginning. The loose amount is no amount. They just said we'll pay something, presumably. If that's the case, does do the defendants have to pay anything? I think if there is no specific agreement, there should be no specific amount that they have to pay. Okay, who's going to be the tiebreaker here? How about you? Does the defendant have? Do the defendants have to pay anything? I think they should. 120 a month? Maybe that's a little much, but I think they should pay. Okay, going inside the card room. Now, these are the certified letters that you sent. Were these uh, picked up or were they returned for not picking up? They were received. They were received. They were received and signed for it. Okay, the first letter comes in May of 2014. And it says two interesting things to me. The letter's from you, and it says, according to your conversation with Tom, this vehicle was only scheduled to be here for three months. It is now six months. But it also says, you owe us $120 a month. And that's in May. Do they answer that letter? No. OK. So now June comes. That's interesting. This is fascinating. Are you Lynn? I'm Lynn. OK, here's a note you write, Tom. When we went to pick up the motorhome, Donna was already gone. This is on June 22nd. We left for camping on Monday. And we will be gone until after July 4th. I had cash for you for April, May, and half of June. But since? We won't be home. I didn't want you to think I wasn't going to pay you. So you didn't pay April, May, or, or June. Right. So here's the check. You know what I'm astonished about? When you say, oh, storage isn't a problem, you didn't keep it there three more months. You kept it there six more months. Storage must be an inconvenience of some sort, or it would have been moved. You agreed to pay for storage, which means that you're cooking up another plan of what to do with it. You're not ditching it. No, we're waiting for the parts. I'm not, I'm not asking a question. Oh. So you're sitting there now with free storage for almost six full years, and all they are asking for is $120 a month in storage, and you're still arguing about it. When you two don't have proof of what the agreement is, other than you're flapping gums, what happens is the judge decides what an appropriate amount for storage is. OK? And I decide 120 is appropriate. So I am ordering you to pay the 800, especially under these facts. I am ordering you to pay the $890 plus prejudgment statutory interest that is applicable in your state. Thank you. That is my verdict. Good luck, folks. Thank you, Your Honor. And we still have a motor home that doesn't work. Yeah. Here's the defendant here. Uh, how'd that go? Not well. No. Because the truth was not allowed to be said. And was allowed to be said. Not, not the truth that as it happened, Are because her partner was Tom, and we dealt with Tom with everything, not Donna. So no, no, the it's truth was not heard. Mm -hmm. Why don't you get uh, a receipt when you're paying cash? Get that was foolish. It was yeah. foolish. It was. Evidence, because you know, you have evidence of paying, and it backs up your story. Yes. Well, right. it's a lesson learned. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do with the motorhome now? Oh, well, I guess I'll have to get the parts and, and have it fixed or fix it myself. Yeah, that'd be nice. You can travel around in it. No, I had to go out and buy another one. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Good. Good. Okay. All right. So come on in here. What's your reaction? This uh, this case finished. I'm glad. Mm -hmm. what it's are you over glad? with. You're glad about what? Being done with them. With them. <laughs> mm -hmm. A little too easy going, are you? <laughs> well, Just not... trying to be understanding and treat people how you want to be treated. That's all. So. Wow, you lucked out, huh? <laughs> Harvey? So in this case, judges will do this 
where there's clearly an agreement to pay something, judges oftentimes will come up with a reasonable amount. That will do it for this case, litigants. For the next case on the way into the courtroom, right now.